out of mind. Let's fill the doubt for your freedom ring and patriotic voices sing. Red, white, and blue, never give up. You represent America! Open and praying for a brighter day. I listen to my heart and I obey. How can I see it any other way? I'm looking at a Some exciting scenes from today's episode of Liberty's Kids. It's never been clearer to me than right now. We have got to separate from England. At Lexington and Concord, the British fired on Americans. It's time for them to get as good as they give. It's time for the first American attack on the Redcoats. Moses, I'm a journalist, not a workman. You're whatever I need you to be in order to get the Gazette to the people of Philadelphia. Yes, James. Be a proper patriot and stop complaining. Mayor's here! Hey! Oh, please. Is there anything addressed to Miss Sarah Phillips? Oh, Monsieur Henri Lefebvre? I am expecting a large shipment of gold doubloons from off the coast of Virginia. A small shipment? Ah, uh, perhaps some news from the continent. Uh, here! Over, Over here! here. Uh, Over here! Thank you, my boy. Franklin, Franklin, Franklin. There's no word from my father? I'm afraid letters from Ohio are few and far between, Sarah. This separation cannot continue. I will make a home with him in the colonies. I vow it. Nothing for me, neither? Nothing for you, either. However, I did receive these out-of-town newspapers. Finally! My doubloons? Perhaps the next mail. <gasps> Look at this! Forced from their homes? Where? The New Hampshire Grants. Where's that? Up between New York and Canada. Beautiful country. They call the hills up there the Green Mountains. Fine logging in the Grants. Fine maple syrup, too. Maple syrup? Listen, ejectment coming thick and faster. Women sobbing and lamenting, children crying, and men pierced to the heart with sorrow and indignation at the approaching tyranny. Now that's newspaper writing. It's by someone named Ethan Allen. It sounds to me like Mr. Allen is hyperbolizing in an effort to inflame the emotions of potential traitors to the Crown. What did she say? She said, uh, something I wouldn't lower myself by repeating. She said, Henri, that this man, Allen, is a liar. He sounds to me like a patriot. He sounds to me like a loudmouth, as does someone else I know. James, Sarah, Allen might be exaggerating but he's not lying. Allowing people's land to be taken out from under them. The Redcoats aren't using muskets this time, but they're firing a broadside at us nonetheless. I've been wondering where the next hostilities with the Crown might take place. This could be our answer. You have as much chance of filing a better story than me as a man has of walking on the moon. You're rather sure of yourself for someone with a chunk of venison stuck between his teeth. Oh, got it. Thanks. Look out! Whoa! 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 That was scary. Can we do it again? This would be an absolutely lovely place for my family to make a home. Thieves! Let me do the talking. I do not need you to take care of me. Thank you. I will talk with thieves! Afternoon, youngsters. Can we search him now, Tom? Can we search him? That won't be necessary, Luke. Our friends here will be happy to show us anything interesting they might be carrying about their persons. Won't you, kids? 
A ways back, we passed a guy who looked real rich. You can probably catch him if you hurry. Come on, Tom. Let's go get him. You're a clever pup, ain't you? Now tell old Tom what you're really doing up in these parts. I am a journalist and demand safe passage in the name of King George III. I demand to meet your leader. <laughs> <laughs> and I demand to meet your cook. <laughs> you boys trap game in the woods and don't invite me to the feast? May I assume that you are the leader of this vile band of kidnappers and thieves? Some of the boys might take offense at your characterization. But yes, I'm their leader. My name's Ethan Allen. Ethan, Ethan Allen? Allen? Ethan Allen? All I did was ask you where the finest land is to be found in the Grants. You Tories come here and expect us to just hand over our land and property? Are you mad or stupid or you're just a thief? Uh, I can answer that. <clears throat> you call me a thief? You're the one who had me bound and gagged and dragged here against my will? My men were doing their duty. And anyway, you're free now, aren't you? If you won't show me the land, I'll go see it myself. You'll do nothing of the kind, my little red coat. Yum, maple syrup. No more will you steal our homes out from under our very feet. And, sad to say, no more can we fight your tyranny peaceably. So often have the pleas and arguments of our lawful committees been ignored by your king. Ah! Ethan, on our way here, we saw a man riding a gilded chariot. Hendrake's back. Tom Buell, boys, Hendrake's back. Hendrake, you sure? Our young scout, Mr. Hiller, saw him. Miss Phillips? It looks like you'll get to see a fine branch home after all. Henry! You will leave my property immediately. We cannot leave your property because we are not on your property. You, Arthur Pendrake, are a snake infesting our Eden. We ask you one more time to leave this place peaceably. In the name of the Governor of New York and the King of England, I will not budge, sir. What will he do? Better get down. Take him, boys. Come on! Anyone else in the house? No, Ethan. Set the horse free. Yeah! This isn't right. It isn't fair. I'm glad you're here, little redcoat. You're about to learn something about fairness. Arthur Pendrake, we the people of the New Hampshire Grants have resolved to offer a burnt sacrifice to the gods of the world. Time to burn the house. This is barbaric. If you're intent on driving this good man out, why don't you simply let the earlier occupant move back in? Let's ask the earlier occupant. Tom? If I did that, they'd just throw me and my family out again. That thief would be back. Right back inside a house I built for my wife and children. Maybe this'll show them we mean business. Ethan? Give me the torch. Sorry, Tom. So am I. I built this house for freedom. Now I burn it for freedom. Go your way now. To the devil with your governor, laws, king, council, and assembly. Ugh.
people have three inalienable rights, James. Rights that they cannot be denied. And those are the rights to life, liberty, and property. If the government fails to protect those rights, it's the people's right to revolt and form a new government. It's never been clearer to me than right now. That's exactly what we have to do. We have got to separate from England. At Lexington and Concord, the British fired on Americans. It's time for them to get as good as they give. It's time for the first American attack on the Redcoats. Finally, you wouldn't dare. No more burning houses. No more Arthur Pendrakes. The Green Mountain Boys are gonna take Fort Ticonderoga in New York. I will get my own! Sacre bleu! A red coat! Violence, Colonel Allen, is never justified. It's the people's right to revolt. Just where did you get your outrageous excuse for a political philosophy anyway? Well, let me think. Ah, I remember now. That's right. Mr. John Locke from Pensford, England. Oops! Ah! Am I addressing Colonel Allen? You are? I am Colonel Benedict Arnold. Colonel, I have been commissioned by the Massachusetts Committee of Safety to raise a regiment which I have done to attack Fort Ticonderoga. To that end, I hereby order you to turn over to me complete and utter command of the Green Mountain Boys. Well, Colonel, with all the respect due a man of your high rank and obvious importance, I formed this battalion, these are my men, and I'll be darned if some little red peacock is gonna strut in here and start giving them orders. <laughs> this is not a request, Colonel, this is an order. If you will not obey it, I will force you to obey it. You and every single one of your so-called soldiers. How are you gonna do that? Go back to your committee of safety? The Green Mountain Boys are serving under Ethan Allen, or the Green Mountain Boys are going home. <laughs> Captain, this attack is too important to jeopardize by sniping between fellow patriots. So I'll make you a deal. I'll let you share command of the boys here and ride with me in front of them if you agree not to cause any trouble for us back in Massachusetts. But remember, no one gives orders to these men but me. Ever. We agreed? He'll never do it. He must do it. Agreed. Colonel Allen! A red coat riding this way on the white horse with a bright red jacket. He was a shrimp, but he... <gasps> Did you spot the British soldier too, monsieur? <laughs> I decided to attack Fort Ticonderoga for two reasons. First, it's cannon. If we can capture the British cannon, with all due respect to you, miss, we can transport them to Boston. And send those redcoats halfway back to England with their own artillery. Second, if we control Ticonderoga, we control the main waterway into the colonies from Canada. And then, my boy, nothing goes on, in, or out of that water unless we Americans say it does. Now, our spies tell us there are only 50 or so British soldiers defending the fort. But we're expecting a heck of a fight anyway. And let me say one thing to the good people of Philadelphia. Brothers and sisters, there ain't one Green Mountain boy on God's green earth who ain't prepared to meet his maker up there in that fort. Because, Miss Phillips, every man here, no matter how uncouth, how rough, how rude, is profoundly committed to fighting for America's freedom to the last beat of his heart. Colonel Arnold, I wonder if I might ask you a favor? 
Yes, Miss Phillips? Colonel, I request permission to join you and the Green Mountain Boys in your attack on Fort Ticonderoga. Might I be permitted to accompany you on your attack? Hmm. I'm afraid that's out of the question. Son, what you're asking is highly irregular. Sir, with respect, the people of Philadelphia need to know the story of the colony's first attack on the Crown. Sir, the people of Philadelphia need to know the story of America's first attack on the tyrannous mullions of King George III. That's minions. Well, I suppose, in their way, the Green Mountain Boys are highly irregular, too. You'll stay as much out of harm's way as possible. Yes, sir! I don't doubt that the Pennsylvanians need news of our attack, Miss Phillips, but I'm afraid they'll have to get it from someone less qualified than yourself. I simply cannot permit a proper young lady to accompany troops into combat. on getting this story, did you? Fire! Mercy, sir, mercy! Take me to your commanding officer. Now! All right, all right. God and the Continental Congress, I demand that you surrender this fort. <gasps> Come on out, you old rat! My sword, sir. Yeah! Hey, prisoners! Gather all weapons, artillery, and ammunition! That's an order. <laughs> <laughs> well, go on, boys. And find the rest of these redcoats. <laughs> Gather the artillery, collect the cannonballs and musket shot outside. Inch to the left, and you'd be heading for a court martial in Boston. Oh, so sorry, sir. <laughs>
I notice you got your story after all, Miss Phillips. I do hope we meet again under more favourable circumstances. I believe you would like my father. Major Phillips, retired. I understand he was a fine soldier. Please send him my best regards. I shall do so, Colonel. I had dreamed that he might join me in the Grant some day. But I have recently learned that the New Hampshire Grants are no place for our family to make a home. We'll eat heartily tonight. Look at all this food. Mm. No wonder the Redcoats didn't fight us. They were too fat and happy from all this jerky. All this without firing a shot? We're gonna whip those Redcoats in no time. Don't get cocky, son. We've a long way to go before we win our freedom. Hold on there, Edward. Wasn't that little French weasel trying to drum up some of this stuff back in the Green Mountains? Dr. Franklin will put my story on the front page. He'll put mine on the front page. Dr. Franklin is many things, but he is not insane. Papers ready. <laughs> Who, Who got, got the, the front, front page? page? You both did. I never thanked you for not giving me away on the boat that night. I had to let you write that story. How else could I have proved that mine was superior? Spell superior. Uh... Gee, these flapjacks look good. Oh, I imagine they are. <laughs> but hold your fire. We'll not fire on the king's troops unless we're fired upon first. It's a wonder you two are still standing. April 19, 1775. Dear Mother, The people of the colonies are stubbornly independent. Raised our taxes! Did we ever say? None more so than here in Massachusetts. And who can forget our brothers who lost their lives in the Boston Massacre? Yeah! They are bent on governing themselves. Now, 
to cry the same redcoats who just 12 years ago helped them win the French and Indian War. The British are on the move! Cousin Tom! He's serving under General Gage. Marching on Concord. What must he be thinking right now? Cousin Tom, you are the answer. Are you up already? Say, what are you doing? I'm going to find my cousin. What he's thinking is what the people of these colonies need to know. A lieutenant's perspective on the soldier's role in keeping peace. There won't be peace until we have the same rights every Englishman has. The rights we took for granted not long ago. James, these are the king's colonies. Is it reasonable to expect him to just let them disobey Parliament's laws? Is it reasonable to send soldiers to enforce tyranny? The king doesn't want trouble any more than you do. But unless both sides understand each other, trouble is bound to come. On that we agree. But Parliament has ignored our petitions. It's now up to the King to make them understand. He has the power. If only he'd use it. And that's why I'm going to see Tom. So the colonists will understand their fight is with the lawmakers, not with the soldiers. You can't. It could be dangerous. I expect it will. But this is a big story with two sides. And you can't cover both at the same time. So we'll have to work together, even with the danger. I'm off to find my cousin. I thought we were working together. Darn, her together is faster than mine. See to your water supplies. Fall out. Tom? Tom Phillips? Sarah! Where? How? What are you doing here? I came to see you, of course. And who is this, Tom? This is my cousin, Sarah Phillips. Sarah, allow me to present Lieutenant Brian Johnson. How did you know where to find your cousin? You're not a spy, are you? I'm a loyal British subject, thank you. I'm here to write a newspaper story. And to warn you that you and your company may be in grave danger. Don't worry, there'll be no trouble. General Gage himself said he doubts that the infernal rebels would take up arms against His Majesty's troops. <laughs> Mr. Monroe, I'm James Hiller, a journalist for the Pennsylvania Gazette. I was wondering what militia this is and who is in charge. There are two companies here, James. Minute Company and Alarm. Our leader is up ahead, there at the green. And he would be? A veteran of the French and Indian Wars, Captain John Parker. Major Pitcairn, what do you make of all these bells? They announce our presence, sir. Fie, this was to have been a secret mission. I'm afraid it's no secret, sir. And I doubt we'll be able to seize the Colonial's munitions as we planned. Cursed rebels. We've endured a sleepless night and tremendous discomfort because of them. Being a soldier suits you, Tom. The finances back home left me no other choice. Still, everything works out for the best. I've done all right for myself. Every man here is proud to serve with him. But Brian's the real soldier. These ragtag colonists will wilt when faced with the likes of him. In truth, most of the colonists remain loyal to the Crown. There's only a small handful of troublemakers. I'm pleased to hear you say that. That's exactly the sort of thing my readers need to hear. Colonel Smith, the scouts report a number of armed rebels just ahead. Major, you will proceed into the township with an advance guard. I shall follow with the grenadiers. The rebels may be up to no good. Dispatch your swiftest rider to General Gage. Have him send reinforcements. The cooler heads among the rebels will carry the day if we outnumber them. You'll be perfectly safe here. 
If you're under orders not to harm anyone, why should I need to hide? It's just a precaution. Um, the wall will work better if you duck behind it. Should I be worried about you, Tom? Not at all. Neither side wishes to fight. I'll see you shortly. Squatting behind walls isn't very dignified for a lady, and it's useless for a journalist. Gentlemen, please form into your respective companies. What about me, Captain Parker? You're welcome to join us, lad. But you'll need a weapon. I'm afraid we have none to spare. Here's my weapon. I'd like to join as a journalist. A writer printing the right things is worth a thousand soldiers. You might want to amend that statement, sir. Light Company, advance! Sound to arms! Sound advance! Steady, men. Stand your ground and don't fire unless fired upon. They number close to 650. How many are we? Fewer than 80, John. I should be able to see everything safely from... James! Sergeant Monroe, form ranks. Lay down your arms and disperse, and you will not be harmed. Stand your ground, men. Surround and disarm them. Please disperse. Please do as the Major says. Surround and disarm them. Charge bayonets! Light Company, advance! Surrender your arms! Never! We will not! We will never! We shall use force! Disarm them! Where did that come from? Who fired? Who fired? Present arms! Present arms! No! Look out! Stop! Hold your fire! We were ordered not to fire! Tom, we're being shot at! many casualties there were? Eight dead, sir. A number of others wounded. I couldn't count them. I was... afraid. Nothing to be ashamed of. We all ran. Who fired first? I couldn't tell. It doesn't matter. It has brought us to war. A war no one wanted. I'm sorry for these disagreeable circumstances, Colonel Smith. The men show little inclination for discipline. Do not deplore the actions of your men without first examining your own, Major. We are here to seize munitions, not 
kill colonists. There had better be no such display in Concord. Weave a man down. Oh. Surgeon! Tom? Tom? <gasps> it's Brian. No. His leg is badly shot up. Form ranks! Tom, please don't go. I must. It's my duty. Then I'm coming with you. I don't think you should. Things could become very dangerous from here on out. Don't try to talk me out of it. A war may have started here today. I'm going to cover the story start to finish, and you're going to help me. Shoulder arms! We march to Concord! What have we done? Where are we headed, Mr. Hosmer? To the Liberty Pole. Major Buttrick's giving orders. He's a good man. We fought side by side against the French and Indians during the last war. There's been shooting. What's going on? Is anyone The hurt? rumors are true. The Redcoats have shot and killed militiamen in Lexington. Two of my kinsmen among them. We we'll make them pay. No, 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 care no, now they're headed here to Concord. The men of Acton await your orders, Major Buttrick. As do the men of Lincoln! Men of Miriam's Corner and already! Bedford. Excellent. We'll need every man to help defend our liberties. Follow me! We'll show them! We must defend ourselves! This we must fight for we don't get away with it. Sergeant, I have a friend, a fellow journalist, who's with the British. Is there a way we can tell the men not to shoot at her? They won't aim for a woman. But these muskets are not accurate at a long distance. They could hit anybody or miss everybody. I hope that anybody is not Sarah. Look at them. How brazen. They're not even trying to conceal their strength from us. Colonel Smith, sir. Lieutenant Tom Phillips, sir. And this is my cousin, Sarah Phillips. She's a journalist. Is that so, Miss Phillips? Yes, sir. For the Pennsylvania Gazette. Ben Franklin's newspaper. Sarah is a loyal British subject, here to tell the British side of the story, sir. I believe that the majority of people here are loyal to England and supportive of the army's presence. But there are those who would paint you as monsters. I wish the colonists to know that the army is just as human as they are. And Dr. Franklin has allowed me to do that. You do have a way with words. Very well. Allow me to offer you an excellent seat and a spyglass so that you can witness my gentle-handed discipline of the rebels. Thank you, sir. Lieutenant, you are dismissed. Yes, sir. James, James, where are you? You there. Yes, you. Come here. Yes, sir? If you're going to report, I want you to do it from a safe distance. Nowhere near the fighting. Yes, sir. They've given us the center of town. Perhaps they want no more trouble. And neither do we. Let's not forget General Gage's orders that the people of Concord are to be treated with respect. There's smoke coming from the center of town, sir. Will you let them burn down the town? I say we go and put a stop to it. I dispatched four companies to search the Barrett farm for hidden munitions and two more to guard the North Bridge. Excellent. What happened in Lexington must not be repeated here in Concord. These rebels need to be taught a lesson. All companies, march to the bridge, but hold your fire. We'll not fire on the King's troops unless we're fired upon first. They're coming to cross the bridge, Captain Laurie. If they want the bridge, we'll give it to them. In pieces. Destroy the blanket. How oh, dare they? That's our bridge! They can't do that! I say we we can't let them do that! Let's get them! It's no use, Captain. We don't have time. 
something is happening at the North Bridge. This was all just a misunderstanding. We've probably put a stop to the trouble here. Yes. Yes, everyone will see what has happened and not want any more bloodshed. That's right. Everything works out for the best. I'm glad you're all right. My cousin, Tom. I'm so sorry, Sarah. Come, let's get to a safer place. April 19, 1775, continued. Oh, mother, Tom's death seems to me a sign of awful things to come. This conflict is not at all what James thought it would be. It won't be simply a contest of ideas. It promises to be a contest of arms. It promises to be everything I had prayed we would avoid. Dr. Franklin! Dr. Franklin! Moses, it's good to see you. How's London? Far away, both geographically and politically. Hey! I have news for you, Dr. Franklin. As I have for you. Moses, I used to love England. Its beauty, its culture, its people. I had hoped we could find a compromise under which the colonies and the crown could coexist peacefully. But Moses, I, and our interests were met with indifference, disrespect, contempt in what was supposed to be a meeting about recalling the governor of Massachusetts. My British friends tried to humiliate me. He's a traitor. He's a traitor? On the evening of 16 December, cowardly bandits attacked the Dartmouth. And who is responsible for inflaming the subjects of Boston to this violence? None other than the man before us. You have no honor, sir. You are a scoundrel, sir. Have you nothing to say for yourself? The heart of a fool is in his mouth, but the mouth of a wise man is in his heart. Ah, the famous Franklin wit. Perhaps I need to remind you, a rope is the proper reward for treason. Being in England convinced me that a fight between the colonies and the crown is now inevitable. Being here would have convinced you of the same thing. British soldiers fired on our people at Lexington and Concord. The crown's men fired upon her own subjects? Unthinkable. Tell me everything, Moses. Here, you can read all about it. The Shot Heard Round the World by James Hiller and Sarah Phillips. I'm very proud of them. And now we must prepare for war. <laughs> <laughs> 